Good morning. My name is Chris Gallard with the Minnesota Association of Realtors. We welcome you to this week's e-video resource. Today we're going to discuss an issue that you've probably heard in your office, probably heard scuttlebutt about it online, maybe blog some information yourself. This is dealing with the National Association of Realtors Political Survival Initiative. Now that's a long word and I'm just going to call it the political fund moving forward to make it quick. This all has been generated by last year's Supreme Court decision based upon companies, nonprofits, and unions being able to use dollars that would be considered regular income in order to assist political candidates or to do independent expenditures on behalf of candidates in an election period. The Minnesota Association of Realtors and the National Association of Realtors have been leaders in the political realm through our political action committee called RPAC. As our leaders at NAR looked at the issue and tried to make a determination going forward of how the environment was going to change, they researched whether or not NAR was going to have the resources to compete with the new giants that were going to enter the game. After six months of research and exhaustive studies on the last election and how election trends are appearing in different states, they made a determination that the, Minnesota, that the Realtors, as a family, local, state, and national, needed to change and needed to start what's called the Political Survival Fund. This fund will be a dues dollars increase of $40. Now, I realize $40 is a lot of money, and everybody does realize that. And later today, we'll go through some Q&As in a separate video. The important thing to know is what is the money going to be used for, and why do we need it right now? In politics, it's critical that the players in the field, meaning legislators, other organizations that may be against us, regulatory bodies, understand that you're serious about politics having a large corpus, a large amount of money to draw on, using those funds strategically to make sure that we're moving forward, the real party initiative is important for our business. And one example that many of you are familiar with is the banks and real estate issue. A few years ago, NAR took on, starting at about 2000, making sure that banks couldn't own real estate companies. Now many of you thought this was ridiculous. Why would we fight for that? Free competition, everybody should be in the marketplace. And that was good rhetoric. NAR though had done a lot of research and understood how banks would operate if they owned real estate companies. I want you to push forward to today. What do you think it would be like if NAR wasn't victorious and all of the foreclosures, all of the short sales that banks control had to go through their real estate company? How do you think it would be trying to put a contract together? What do you think the compensation levels would be on these short sales? Maybe they wouldn't even share with you. Maybe they'd go to buyers directly and say, buy our listings, avoid a realtor. That's a critical issue. That's one example, even though it's happened a couple of years ago where we got rid of it before it was a problem. But a lot of people in real estate and in the society and hall look at things in the short term. Politics is a long-term game. In the next video, if you have time, I hope you'll listen to the Q&As where I'll go through NAR's questions and answers so that you have an idea of what the fund is, where the dollars will be used, and why they're moving forward at this time. I thank you for tuning in today, and we hope that you'll watch, read, and be aware of all the activities related to this proposal. Thank you.